do you need 20% down when you're buying a house? Well, we have all been told if you put less than 20%, you're going to have PMI, private mortgage insurance, and you're pretty much just giving your money away. Ridiculously stupid. Well, is that advice still valid in 2024? Is it actually stupid or smart? Two examples. The average homes in America today is about $420,000. Example number one, if you put down 20%, you need about $84,000 as your down payment. And after closing costs, it is about $88,000. You have a loan balance of $336,000. At about 6.5% interest rate today, your monthly payment is $2,124 a month. All right, example number two, you put only 5% down, which is only $21,000 required. After closing costs, $25,000. You have a loan balance of $399,000. At 6.5% interest rate, you have a monthly payment of $2,522. I'm going to put these numbers on the screen as references, so you can look at them throughout the video to compare. Well, how did I come up with a $4,000 closing cost? $1,200 title insurance, $500 attorney fees. Home inspection, $500. Appraisal, $500. Termite reports, $300. $1,000 for miscellaneous items, including recording fee, county tax, city tax, state tax, sewer letters, all together, $4,000. And you can argue you can put 3.5% down with the FHA loan. Yes, you could, but the market is very competitive these days, and there are a lot more conventional loans than FHA loans these days. And the minimum down payment for a conventional loan is 5%. So if you put down $21,000 as a down payment, you have about $399 as a loan balance. And because you only put 5% down, you're going to have this thing, PMI, private mortgage insurance. And typically, the annual premium for a private mortgage insurance is about 0.5% of your loan balance. So if we use 0.5% times $399, thousand dollars your annual premium is just under two thousand dollars monthly is about 166 dollars and 25 cents look sometimes pmi premium could be lower than 0.5 percent for example for this property of mine i had a loan balance of 223 thousand two hundred and fifty dollars and my monthly pmi payment is just under 60 dollars which is about 714 dollars a year which is about 0.32 percent of the loan balance look your fico scores have an impact on your pmi rates so make sure you have a good FICO score or repair your credit whenever you're trying to buy a house. And that's probably why Dave Ramsey wants you to put 20% down or pay cash for your homes. Because we all know what he thinks about credit cards. Stupid, 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 or stupid squared. Well, he's not wrong in some cases. He's a very successful man. And we'll go through some of his reasons in a little bit. Okay, if you only put 5% down as your down payment, there are two scenarios again. Scenario 1, you don't have the 20% down payment money, you only have 5%. The difference between the 5% and 20%, a delta of 15%, is about $63,000. Well, at least that's what you would think. Well, ask yourself this question. How long would it actually take you to save about $63,000? Let's say two years. Well, the truth is, house prices will go up as well. Let's say they only go up 5% year over year. So in two years, it's not $420,000 anymore. It is $463,000. And 20% down payment for a $463,000 home is not $63,000. It's about $92,600. So you actually need to save about $72,000 in two years, not $63,000. So that's why people say, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. But people have been calling for real estate recession since 2018. Look at where we are now. <clears throat> Just like the stock market. You can never time the market. The market will always win. Scenario number two, assume you have $88,000, which is the 20% down payment money. Well, in this case, do you put 20% down or only 5% down? Let's say you only put 5% down. You're going to keep $63,000 in your pocket. And do you know what you can do with $63,000? Well, if you're just someone you don't like PMI, sure, put down 20%. Well, here's the thing. You could always try 5% and if you don't like it, since you already have that money, you could always put that 15% back into the principal of the mortgage later to get rid of the PMI. But whenever you need that money back out again, you had to borrow it, refinance your home, a HELOC. So putting down 5% instead of 20%, you save about $63,000. Well, technically, you're borrowing that $63,000 at your mortgage interest rate, which is 6.5%. And $63,000 at the 6.5% 30-year amortized payment is about $398 a month, which is the difference of your monthly payments if you put down 5% versus you put down 20%. On top of that, you need to pay about $2,000 a year as PMI, which is the negative 3.17% return on that money. How did I get that number? $1,995 divided by $63,000. So technically, you're borrowing this $63,000 at a rate of 9.67%. 6.5% interest rate plus 3.17% negative return on your money with PMI. And do know this, that negative 3.17% return on your money is actually temporary. 
Why? I'll explain in a minute. So some of y'all had an idea for this situation already. If you had a 20% down money and only put 5% down, you save about $63,000. You could invest that $63,000 of difference and make some money back. Well, you need to make at least 9.67% return on your money to justify investing that money is a smart choice. Well, today you could technically find a 5.5% return on a savings account, 9% return with the stock market on average. And here's the controversial one whole life insurance policy. Depends on how comfortable you are with debt and how far you are into a policy. Look, this $63,000, you do not want to invest this into something risky or something you don't know how to do it. Like you're on Bitcoin or GameStop, you could invest in real estate if you know what you're doing. Look, I personally bought and sold hundreds of houses and I own 99 doors of rentals. My advice to you, do not overpay for real estate. You make money when you buy, not when you sell. Never time the market. And remember the three most important rules for real estate. Number one, location. Number two, location. Number three, you guessed it, location. I literally can't emphasize this enough. Please, location, location, location. All right, back to it. Remember I said that PMI 3.17 negative return is temporary? Here's why. Traditionally, for a 30-year amortized mortgage, it takes about 146 months, which is 12 years and 2 months, to pay down 20% of the principal, which is how long you would think to get rid of your PMI, right? Not necessarily. Here's an example. You only put 5% down, which is $21,000 for a $420,000 home. 30-year fixed mortgage at 6.5%. You have a monthly payment of $2,522 a month. 36 months, which is 3 years later you have been making your payments. You reduce your principal balance from $399,000 down to, oh gosh, I'm just going to read this number, $384,704.08, which means you have paid down 3.58% of your principal balance. Yeah, 3.58% is not going to get rid of your PMI, but your house has been appreciating. Let's say it appreciates 5% year over year. Now your home is actually worth $486,000. Look, if you're going to argue with me on the appreciation rate, go back to this minute mark and watch the reasons. Home appreciation compounds as well. Remember, I didn't say it. Albert Einstein said this. Compound interest is the eighth world wonder. And in this case, it's on your side. So now your home is worth about $486,000. Well, let's assume your home just got appraised for exactly this number. Well, you have about $384,000 principal balance. Use that number divided by your home value, which is $486,200. You actually have about 79% balance to value ratio, which means you have about 21% equity in your house, which means you can talk to your mortgage lender and get rid of your PMI. Look, best case scenario, get your home reappraised, which is what I did and I got rid of this PMI in 18 months. Here's the proof. Worst case scenario, there's a real estate recession. You either keep making your payments or put that $63,000 into the principal part of your mortgage to meet that 20% equity line to drop your PMI. So let's recap. If you don't have the 20% down payments and you're trying to save up to 20% down, this is not a financial advice, okay? If I were you, I would pull the trigger before you have 20% down and just pay the PMI. And if you have the 20% down money already, it depends on how conservative you are, the time of your life, and your interest rate, of course. For me, personally, I would still do a 5% instead of 20. But that's just me. Again, this is not a financial advice. Just a random Asian guy on the internet that made a few bucks and retired through real estate. If you find this video helpful, like and subscribe.